Praise the Lord, everyone. I pray you're having a blessed day. I want to share the Word of God with you today. Sister Angel sharing my uh, Saturday devotion, Saturday scriptures. I want to share this with you. The Word of God so deeply spoke to my soul and encouraged me. He's lifted my head today. And the scripture says that He is the glory and the lifter of my head. And so how many has ever uh, had the Lord just come along and lift your head? And turn things around for you and encourage you and speak to you and breathe upon you. I'm just so thankful for the Lord and the relationship that uh, he allows us to have with him. That he tore the veil from the top to the bottom and we can run inside that throne room. Glory be to God. I want to share a testimony with you today. I don't have time to go into it all. But if you comment, um, comment, message me, I will try to uh, make a, a longer video a longer testimony and give more um uh, detail on that and uh if you want feel led to you can share this uh so i want to talk to you uh, about my deliverance and uh how the lord moved in my life and i want to talk to you about um generational cycles i want to talk to you about get be given a new name and a new identity and so um as most of you know i was saved when i was uh eight years old uh, the Lord uh, had moved mightily in my life. I was saved at home. My mother prayed every night. She would pray through to the Holy Ghost. And uh, so she would touch the throne room of God. She would get into that uh, throne room and she would pray and pray in the Spirit. God would speak to her and give her revelations. And she would share these revelations with me. And it changed my life. And so she taught me uh, parables and the story of uh, the death, burial, and resurrection. And it put a hunger in me, and I began to seek the Lord, and uh, I wanted salvation, and I watched a very anointed play uh, of uh, heaven and hell. Uh, it's uh, heaven's gates and hell's flames at uh, Woodward Church of God. They had it was so anointed. It was in the nineties, um, and I uh, so they had bought. We had went to the play, and then we had bought the tape, and uh, I just felt led to uh, look for that tape and to find it. And so I had watched it, and it had all different types of people standing before God. And um, as uh, I began to watch that anointed demonstration, that anointed play, uh, it just resonated in my heart so strong. And uh, everything Mama had been talking about had just really, the Lord opened up. And I know that God can save children, and He can save at an early age, because uh, He did me, and I had that encounter. So we prayed. And uh, we prayed through, and the power of God hit that little living room when I was eight years old. And she said, I feel like the Lord wants to give you the Holy Ghost. And uh, when she had prayed through uh, in her 20s, she was in a, um, a Church of God revival uh, that the Lord baptized her in the Holy Ghost. And so she, uh, and, uh, so she says, I feel like the Lord wants to give you the Holy Ghost. And it fell up on me. And I talked in tongues, eight years old. So uh, as time grew older, uh, I began to take on some some titles and some labels, and um, things began to happen in my life. And so um, I had some ups and downs, and so um, I ended up um, uh, carrying some some baggage and some bondage, and uh, I ended up um, just being up and down in the Lord. And so. Um, Years ago, um, I, the Lord took me on a series of fasting, a series of fasting. Uh, I'm talking about, this is just my testimony. I'm not saying that you have to do this. Uh, fasting every day. Every day I fasted and I prayed until I prayed through and I fasted every day. And I read the Bible till it talked to me. And I did this for uh, a year. And uh, the Lord broke chains. He broke yokes. Uh, he brought me out of bondage. He gave me a new name, his identity, a purpose. And I cherish the, that year, that monument in my life, uh, 2017. Um, and I, I've had encounters with the Lord before. I have fasted in the past. I've prayed through in the Holy Ghost in the past. Uh, I told you I had my ups and downs. But there was, even though I pressed in, I didn't press through, and there was a, like a restriction there. There was a hindrance, and um, how many know like the story of Lazarus 
Jesus called his name and he came out of the tomb, but he was still bound in a sense. He was wrapped in those grave clothes. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. And so uh, there's levels of deliverance and, and levels uh, of bondage. And uh, Brother Michael Wynn preached a word a few Sundays ago uh, about the blind man, how the Lord touched him. And uh, he, he could see, but it was men as trees. And the Lord touched him again, and he could see uh, clearly. And uh, Michael Wynn was talking about getting that second touch, and that so uh, blessed my soul. And so um, I just feel led to tell my testimony. I was seeking the Lord. And I've got a pen here. I was seeking the Lord, and uh, I was saying, Lord, what can what what do, are you speaking to me today? And the Lord was dealing with me about my testimony. And so, uh, one thing the Apostle Paul never got over was his testimony. And the Lord brought him before kings and rulers, and he told his testimony. And how he was on the road to Damascus to persecute the church of the living God. And history says that when his feet touched Gentile soil, oh hallelujah, his heart would begin to be pricked. And that's when he had that encounter on the road to Damascus. Hallelujah. And the Lord called him and changed him that day. And he never got past his testimony. He did go before kings and rulers. And even though he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament and had those great revelations God revealed to him uh, on that mountain uh, there in Galatians, it says that he went to Mount Arabia for three and a half years and he sought God. Hallelujah. And he said, I, Paul, come to you with a revelation, a mystery of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I want to share my testimony with you today. We all have a testimony and a story to tell. And, and we're all uh, ministers of the gospel to tell our testimony. Uh, glory be to God. And we might not pastor or preach or evangelize, but we're to tell others what Jesus has done for us. And we're witnesses of the power of God. Peter, uh, excuse me, Paul said it's foolishness under the world, but the power of God to them that have been saved. Come on, somebody. So let's get into it. So I, I, I um, when I think about my testimony and my deliverance, I think about Jacob. Jacob had some encounters with God, and um, but he had to surrender. So in my uh, testimony, uh, I was surrendered to a degree, but I had to fully surrender. And so uh, I want to read to you Genesis 32 and 24 through 30 where Jacob uh, has to surrender. So Jacob was left alone, and there he wrestled with the man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and it was out of joint. And as he wrestled with him, he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. I will not let thee go, unless thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, For thy name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with man, and hast prevailed. And where uh, it is uh, asked for thy name, he said, Why are you asking for my name? And he said uh, that he blessed him, and that he shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. And it says that Jacob called the name of that place Peniel. I can't pronounce that right, so have mercy on me. I'm a country girl. I cannot pronounce it. But it says, For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. So Jacob was known as Jacob the deceiver. And uh, he had uh, all these situations against him and these labels on him. And he had to embrace truth. And he needed God to move. And he came to God in truth. And uh, he was uh, left alone with God. And he began to wrestle. Uh, and uh, God changed his name and changed his life. And he touched the hollow of his thigh that he began to limp. And he was never the same. And so uh, what I got from this story is... Um, generational cycles generational curses jacob had the generational cycle on his life of being a deceiver because both abraham isaac and jacob deceived it says that abraham deceived in genesis um 20 and 1 through 8 deceiving uh pharaoh of saying that um sarah was his sister and then isaac deceives uh, abimelech saying that uh his wife was his sister in Genesis 26 and 7 through 9. And then Jacob deceives uh, his father 
and uh, steals his brother's blessing. And uh, before that, he even stole his birthright. So th there's generational cycles. And I had these generational cycles on my life. And, and when I come to the Lord, uh, you know, you can come to the Lord and he'll save you. He'll meet you there. Uh, but uh, it takes time to go through that sanctification and submitting and allowing God to change and revealing it. He don't bring, sanctify you all at once. But he'll bring those changes to you. And uh, so um, I want to talk to you today about the name uh, the name of that place, uh, Peniel. Uh, when the uh, people in the Bible named a place, it was a monument. A monument was marked as a time and place that God moved for them. It changed the course of their life and it signified a revelation from God. Do you have any monuments in your life? Some examples of monuments is Bethel is where Jacob remembered his vision. Gilgal is where uh, Joshua uh, commoderated the Israelites uh, in the miraculous entrance into the promised land. And um, also uh, Abraham uh, had said this place shall be called, uh, he is Jehovah Jireh, uh, and uh, the Lord will provide because he provided a ram in the bush. Come on, somebody. So uh, there's a monument in my life when the Lord changed my life. And so... Um, Abraham and Jacob had to have their name changed, and it signified that they were not who they used to be. In Genesis 17 and 5, Neither shall thy name be called Abram, but thou shalt be called Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Revelations 2 and 17, To him that overcomes, I will give a new name. Isaiah 62 and 1 through 12, The Gentiles, it says that they shall be given a new name. And so, um, but thus saith the Lord that created you, O Jacob, for he hath formed thee, and have called thee by name, and thou art mine. Galatians 1 and 5 says you're called by grace. He don't call you by your past. He's called you by grace. Second Chronicles, you're called by his name. So, and then step two into my deliverance, uh, and the hindrances being lifted from my walk with God, uh, faith. Uh, it's not enough to believe for others and to see others change, saved, healed, delivered, or God move in their life. But you got to believe it for yourself. And faith, we have faith in levels and faith to a degree. I could believe it for others and to an extent, but I never, I couldn't believe for that abundant life for myself. I had titles and oracles and things that had been engraved in my memory and my mind. So, um, I had to believe that God would move for me and give me abundant life, that he loved me and he had a plan for me. I had to believe it for myself. And so the Lord would speak over me during this time of fasting and prayer and dedication. He would speak over to me, um, the word of God. He'd say, Angel, I come to give life and more abundant. It was very personal and very direct. Angel, I come not to destroy the law, but fulfill. John 14 and 18, Jesus is telling us about the comforter. He said, Angel, I come to you and I will not leave you comfortless. Then um, I had to uh, believe that I had, uh, he could give me a new name, an identity, and I had to believe that he gave me a purpose. Second Corinthians, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation creature old things have passed away behold all things come new that's uh second corinthians 5 and 17 and so why do all things become new when you're a new creation because the lord gives you a new heart and a new mind and you see things like brother michael Wynn had preached with that second touch you see things clearly and so uh number uh four i had to overcome my past so the enemy would use past failures to try to hold me back and the enemy would use lies to try to hold me back and how I overcome this and to go to that next level and to have this freedom in my life I had to go back to prayer and go back to the word of God daily continuously and it was through the prayer and through the word I got my reinsurance and in prayer and the word Jesus said to me yes I forgive you yes you are called yes you're no longer the same um, and so Psalms 103 and 12 as far as the east is from the west has thou re I have removed your transgression and it says Isaiah 43 and 1 through 12. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you and you will not drown. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Neither will the flame kennel upon thee. And so the Lord would give me this reassurance. Um, and so uh, and in the past before 
these things were broken off my life. Um, it's like I would seek God and then the enemy would come in and now remember, uh, you're, you're, you're not a part of what God's doing. You're not worthy. You're not called. God's not anointed you, but he gave me the power and the strength and ability to overcome. And so, and uh, it was, uh, through prayer and through the word fervently. And, uh, I'm reminded of the scripture that says that God took the oracles and the handwritings against us, nailed them to the cross. Hallelujah. And so whatever title, uh, is over you, whatever label, whatever is trying to tell you you're unworthy you're not good enough the devil is a liar jesus went to calvary and, and became that lamb of god that taketh away the sins of the world became that sacrifice and remember when he was bleeding and dying it was for your purpose for your calling it was for your salvation his chastisement was for our peace and those stripes were for our healing, and it's spiritually, physically, mentally, and he gave us a purpose and a calling and identity, and we're to walk in it. Glory be to God. So I want to share that with you, uh, share this testimony. Uh, God bless you all.